Hello everyone. Welcome to Engineered Learnings. Engineered Learnings has been created as an effort to help and reach out to all the engineering students, aspirants and professionals out there with the basic understanding and the crux of the topics important for placements, vivas, semesters, competitive examinations and all types of interviews. So let's go to today's topic. Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. So today we are going to study about a plant, uh, the plant that I currently work in is an acid manufacturing unit. So today we are going to study about sulfuric acid manufacturing uh, through contact process. Uh, so basically uh, we will have discussions about other plants as well like uh, alcohol manufacturing plant or detergent manufacturing plant using various means. We are going to talk all about them and let's start with acid manufacturing plant, a process that we have been familiar with since class 11-12, the contact process. The process may seem a simple one, firstly sulfur burning, then SO2 sulfur to SO2 conversion, SO2 to SO3 conversion and SO3 absorbed by water to form H2SO4. But it's actually not that simple because there are a lot of parameters associated with the gas that is coming out. So we are going to discuss all about it in today's video, acid manufacturing unit. So firstly, when we enter an acid plant, there should be a source of, source of sulfur because sulfuric acid, as we know, we are manufacturing here H2SO4, sulfuric acid. So there has to be a source of sulfur. So uh, in a core acid manufacturing industry where the sole purpose is to manufacture acid, there, going, there is going to be a sulfur burner. So there are going to be uh, sulfur compounds here and you are going to burn off those sulfur compounds to form SO2 gas. So the SO2 gas will be formed and the ID fan will basically induce draft fan to basically pull out the gas from the sulfur burners and uh, move it into the acid plant. Uh, but in industries where acid is a byproduct, like in our industries, metal manufacturing is the main job. And metal in the ore, after being converted in the mills, uh, when it comes from the mines and mills, the, uh, the ore form is PBS, that is lead sulfide, or ZNS, that is zinc sulfide. So these are sulfide ores. So sulfide ores, when we convert them into lead or zinc, metallic form, when you convert into lead and zinc metallic form, the sulfur automatically gets detached and we what we do is we burn off the sulfur to form SO2 and that SO2 gas is used to produce a byproduct sulfuric acid. So in most of the plants in the industry, sulfuric acid manufacturing is not core but as a byproduct of any uh, metal industry or any industry where sulfide ores or sulfide compounds are involved because sulfur burning is a procedure which results in the formation of SO2 and SO2 is what is the primary component required for the manufacturing of H2SO4. So what happens is uh, the sulfide ores burn in the process so oxygen is sent from the bottom it's a bottom board growing furnace and the PBS and ZNS is sent in and the PBS and ZNS burns off the sulfur burns off and sulfur dioxide comes out and there is an ID fan that pulls out this gas constantly from the furnace. So uh, in a sulfur burner or from a furnace, the SO2 gas comes out and ID fans pulls out this gas. Now this SO2 moves into a RJS unit. Now in many units, there is a quench tower. In many units, there is an RJS. What is the purpose of quench tower or RJS? The primary purpose is cooling of the gas. As the name suggests quench, sudden cooling of the gas because the gas is so of a high temperature, at this high a temperature, any sulfur dioxide, any sulfur trioxide gases are firstly corrosive in nature, secondly they are so corrosive that any pipeline that you use to transfer that sulfur dioxide or sulfur trioxide through, it will damage that particular pipeline. So we need to reduce the temperature uh, so that pipeline damage doesn't occur. So the primary purpose of uh, uh, RJS, uh, reverse jet scrubber or a quenching unit, quench tower is to cool down the gas. The secondary purpose is to remove any kind of dust. So RJS or quench tower first purpose is cooling, second purpose is cleaning. So it's basically a cleaning section. So primary and secondary purpose. Now many plants where the dust load is high, like in our plant, even after separation of the dust in multiple stages in the electrostatic precipitator using a 
boiler, extracting the heat and then separating an electrostatic precipitate. And even after that, a lot of dust load is present in the gas. And we need to separate that dust because if that dust reaches my converter bed, uh, wherein SO2 will be converted into SO3, the catalyst will be covered by dust and the reaction wouldn't occur. So the dust is actually occurring as a catalyst poisoning. So my primary purpose in this kind of a plant where sulfide oil ore is burning and the SO2 is having a high dust load. If the dust load is high, dust load is high, then cleaning becomes my primary purpose and cooling becomes my secondary purpose that is associated with it. So in this kind of a plant, by cleaning is the primary purpose. But in general sulfur burners where the sulfur compounds are ensured to be pure or no dust is associated with the coming gas, their cooling is my primary purpose. So it depends on the kind of source of SO2. So cooling and cleaning are the two purposes. So you cannot say primary or secondary as such. You let's keep it that cooling and cleaning are the two purposes. Cleaning being the major one because if dust, any kind of dust or uh, any kind of uh, foreign material enters the converter bed, it's going to destroy or damage or poison the catalyst that's there, that's present in the converter bed. So the primary purpose of uh, primary and uh, the purpose of, of, of the quenching tower or the reverse jet scrubber is cooling and cleaning. So what happens is whenever the gas is coming in, that is the gas is coming in, SO2 is coming into the chamber, in a reverse jet scrubber, what we do is we spray nozzles, nozzles of uh, nozzles are there which spray water in a counter current direction. So adiabatic cooling occurs. In this process, uh, what happens is water, uh, water takes out the dust, wets the dust, wets the dust particles and settle down. So the water that settles down is basically water plus dust and hot. So the water, what it does is cools down the SO2 gas by adiabatic cooling. And in the process, some amount of water vapor definitely goes out with the gas. So SO2 is associated with some H2O in the form of vapors. In the process, the SO2 gas cools down, suffers adiabatic cooling, and the water that settles down, settles down with dust and is hot in nature because the water has basically uh, gained some amount of heat from the air itself. So adiabatic cooling plus sensitive cooling, both types of cooling occurs in a uh, reverse jet scrubber and the water settles down with dust and the SO2 plus H2O uh, in the form of vapor with some combined amount of N2O2 if already some oxygen is present here obviously which is this combined uh, form N2 plus O2 plus SO2 plus H2O vapor moves into the PGCT. Wherein from the PGCT that is packed gas cooling tower. So this is reverse jet scrubber in which two stages of uh, cooling and cleaning is done through nozzle spray water in the counter current direction. After that we move into the PGCT that is packed gas cooling tower. In a packed gas cooling tower as the name suggests the gas moves slowly through the packing and in the counter current direction the water is sprayed. So uh, what happens is they get a contact time, they get an interaction time and there also the water comes out as hot water plus dust. So another stage of cooling whereby further purified SO2 is coming out but the dust load in the SO2 has increased but 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 the moisture, the vapor form of water and a mist carryover from the PGCT occurs. So this SO2 has a considerable amount of H2O in the form of vapor as well as in the form of liquid mist. So, for the mist removal, we have kept a unit of wet ESP, that is wet electrostatic precipitator. What it does is, it charges, it charges the uh, mist particles uh, positively uh, or negatively and the opposite uh, electrode, opposite charge electrode is kept. That is, if you negatively uh, charge the mist particles, you keep a cathode, the mist particles gets attracted towards the cathode and it gets separated out and what comes out is SO2 with no mist but vapor is present. So H2O in the form of vapor is present, H2O in the form of liquid is separated in the wet ESP. So the wet ESP structure is basically to separate the liquid mist and then it moves into the DT that is drying tower. Now we know in, uh, uh, in chemical engineering or in chemistry we have learned that H2SO4 is a very strong dehydrating agent. This is class 10 or class 11 chemistries. So we have learned that H2SO4 is a strong dehydrating agent which pulls in the moisture or pulls in the vapor uh, from uh, H2O readily from a 
gaseous stream. So through a DT we pass uh, H2SO4 and this H2SO4 pulls out the water and comes from the below. So this is H2SO4 that is circulated in the circuit and it comes out as liquid H2SO4 absorbs but plus H2O absorbing some moisture in it. And what comes out from here is SO2, pure SO2 without dust, without moisture and without mist. So no water, no dust is present. That was our purpose and we observed it. Now through the SO2 blower, a blower is there which constantly drives this gas through the circuit, maintains a negative suction and drives the gas throughout the circuit, moves into the blower, the blower discharges the gas under high pressure, the gas further moves through a, a, a network of heat exchanger wherein the gas gains temperature and enters the first bed of reaction. Now this first bed of reactor has catalyst in it, catalyst, catalyst in it. So what is the catalyst for acid manufacturing is V2O5 for contact process with cesium as promoter. So vanadium pentoxide and cesium, remember this my friends, it will be often asked in the interview what is the promoter for acid manufacturing, for sulfuric acid manufacturing. The catalyst is V2O5 promoted by cesium which fastens the reaction. So the reaction starts taking place, now what is the reaction if I may please rub this section now. RJS for cooling and cleaning, PGCT for cooling and cleaning, WSP for mist removal, DT for moisture removal in the form of vapor and finally SO2 blower for maintaining a negative suction throughout and finally it enters the converter plate. If I may please now remove this and write what is the basic reaction. Reaction is nothing but SO2 plus O2 in the presence of V2O5 and cesium as promoter forms SO3. This is the reaction that is taking place here. What happens is V2O5, how does it, the catalysis reaction occurs is V2O5 becomes V2O4 uh, plus O minus. This is the kind of a thing that comes out of the reaction. So it gives a nascent oxygen. It gives a nascent oxygen. O as nascent oxygen attacks the SO2 and becomes SO2 becomes SO3. In the process, this oxygen that is entering with the incoming stream it reacts with this V2O4 plus and forms V2O5 again. So the catalyst is regenerated. Degeneration and regeneration of the catalyst. First the catalyst breaks into V2O4 plus plus nascent oxygen. This nascent oxygen reacts with the SO2. This oxygen doesn't react with the SO2. This oxygen reacts with the V2O4 plus which is a reactive compound forming back V2O5. So this is the regeneration of the catalyst and this is how the catalyst is working. So SO3 formation takes place in the converter bay. So ACP that is acid conversion plant. So uh, acid conversion plant. So uh, converter in the um, uh, acid manufacturing unit is basically of two or three types. One is the 3 2 pass. Uh, so basically, uh, from the third bed, it exists and again enters in the uh, fourth bed. We are going to come to that. This is the 3 2 uh, converter uh, specialism that is uh, three beds and then two beds. So five beds in total. Some converter is 3 1. Some converter is of 3-1-1, some converter is of, it's like a football formation, it's a 4-1. But here we are 3-2, we are going to explain what do we mean by 3-2. 3-2 means first bed uh, product enters the second bed, second bed product enters the third bed. So what happens is first bed SO2 plus SO3, some amount of SO3, again reacts in the second bed. Further reaction takes place, further conversion of SO2 to SO3 takes place, then it enters the third bed, further conversion of SO2 to SO3 takes place. So in the first bed, is about 60-65% reaction takes place, then in the second bed, about 75%, then in the third bed, about 85-90% to of the reaction takes place. Third bed, 90% of the reaction has already taken place. And this third bed, we send this SO3 mainly plus some amount of surviving SO2 plus O2 plus N2, this combination into the IAT chamber. This is intermediate absorption tower. IAT means intermediate absorption tower. What happens in the intermediate absorption tower is we cannot directly react. We cannot directly react this to H2O. It's a very, very exothermic reaction when SO3 in high quantity reacts with H2O, it's a highly exothermic reaction and volcanic eruption may occur. So we, what we do is instead we absorb this SO3, we absorb this SO3 with H2SO4 itself. So we circulate H2SO4, H2SO4 is circulated in the circuit, H2SO4 comes down, comes in contact with the gas, absorbs SO3 to form H2 S2O7. This is called oleum. Now, when this oleum, when this oleum reacts, H2S2O7, 
reacts with H2O further water. This then forms two moles of H2SO4. It's like from one mole of H2SO4, we form two moles of H2SO4. But we cannot absorb this SO3 gas directly with water. We need to use concentrated sulfuric acid to absorb SO3 and then we mix some amount of water to convert it into H2SO4. So from this strata, H2SO4 of 98.5% purity, 98.5% purity is coming out. And this is some amount of it is recirculated to absorb further SO3 and some amount is going into the product tank directly. This is the product tank. Now comes what happens to the outgoing gas. Now the outgoing gas has some amount of SO2 surviving still. Some amount of SO2 plus O2 plus N2. Because nothing has happened to O2 and N2, they can enjoy a free ride. SO3 is being absorbed in this process in the H2S4. So SO2 that is remaining, that is because 90% of the conversion took place, some amount of SO2 is still remaining. This is further rerouted, as you can see, into the fourth bed. That is why we call it the 3 2 pass. That is, first three beds reaction when it goes to the intermediate absorption tower, and then the intermediate absorption tower gas goes into the fourth bed, wherein further reaction takes place. The rest of the 10% of the reaction takes place, about 99% and 99%. 5% SO2 gets converted into SO3. The fourth bed product again goes into the fifth bed. Fifth bed again reaction takes place and about 99% converted, 99% converted SO3 that comes out with some traces of SO2 plus oxygen plus N2. So this further goes into the final absorption tower where again H2SO4 is circulated. When again H2SO4 is circulated and it again undergoes the same reaction, it absorbs, it, there's the second stage of absorption. First stage of absorption, the gas coming out goes in the fourth bed, gets converted again to SO3, fourth bed or fifth bed, the fifth bed react and finally product comes into the final absorption tower, wherein further absorption of SO3 is taking place and finally traces of SO3, traces of SO3 plus traces of SO2 plus oxygen plus nitrogen is going out into going out through the FAT as gas. This gas composition is this. And the acid, the acid here is going into the product then directly. This is not further rerouted. This is further treated in a tail gas treatment plant and released into the atmosphere because not much amount of SO2 and SO3 is present because all of the SO2 has been converted into SO3 and that SO3 has been absorbed by uh, acid. So basically, first we clean the gas, cool the gas, then we remove the mist, we remove the moisture, we uh, uh, remove the dust, we send it through a blower into a heat exchanger network, heat up the gas, use it in a converter bed, first three stages, then absorb it into uh, acid, then again send it back into the fourth bed and fifth bed in a 3-2 pass, 3-2 pass system, 3-2 pass, that is first three beds, then IAT, IAT gas back to the fourth bed, fourth bed, and then fourth bed to fifth bed, and fifth bed to finally FAT final absorption tower. Two stages absorption. So basically, uh, this is called a DCDA process. If you have uh, popularly heard the name DCDA process, why DCDA? Why DCDA? You might have heard double conversion, double, double conversion, double absorption, double absorption. D C D A contact process contact process. This is the conversion form formula. Double conversion. First conversion in the first three beds. Then again conversion in the fourth bed and fifth bed separately. Double absorption first in the IAT intermediate absorption tower. Finally from the fifth bed in the FAT. And this is a three two pass system. Some systems are three one. That is first three beds then IAT then the fourth bed and FAT. So this depends on the total number of beds, the total structure of what the design is, a lot of factors. And this is how we convert it into 98.5% pure acid, 98.5. That I think will conclude the discussion for the manufacturing of acid, manufacturing of acid unit, um, as was requested by one of our members. Um, and if you liked our video, share it with your friends, like our page, um, subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much.